Hi, this is Barty Strange, and these are records in my life. Yo. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. How are you today? Dude, I'm good, man. Just, you know, one day at a time, you know, life is good. <laughs> I mean, you're a busy, you're a busy fella. I was just, I was just, uh, you know, because I listen, I follow you like through Sirius XMU and of course through, you know, the website and stuff like that and shit is really going on for you. Like everything's, everything's going the right way. It's crazy i'm shocked everything is going well <laughs> <laughs> it's tell me about the new record that congratulations again on um farm to table it's dropping pretty soon tell us tell us about it who you work where and when and who yeah sure i mean farm to table um i started recording that record basically the day my last record came out i um, live forever it came out October 2nd of 2020, on October 1st, I was in Maine with my band pre-producing this record. Um, kind of, Cause I was kind of honestly kind of scared. I, I didn't know how um, Live Forever would be received. And I was like, well, you know, I've got a bunch of songs now, so let's just keep tracking. And so um, I'm really glad I did. Um, and I was really happy with those songs. And um, over the last year and a half, I just kind of built on those songs and turned it into an album. I finished it um in london um at the 4ad studios but most of it was tracked here in my basement um or you know in london <laughs> so very special i did it with my friends just like my last couple records my buddy chris connors helped produce it with me um he's an amazing producer works with kanye west and a bunch of other really special people um my band is the that i tour with is the band that's on the record for the most part um, Dan Kleiderman, Jordan Blakely, John Days, Graham Richmond, um, and a few of other people too from my community um, in New York and DC. So, you know, special record. I, I'm really proud of it and I'm excited for it to come out and for people to hear it. That's fantastic that you can collaborate and, you know, from the studio to the live setting with your friends. And uh, I saw you guys with um, Courtney Barnett in Vancouver a while ago, and it just looks like I mean, it just looks like friends and putting out high energy and having a great time on stage. You love you love playing live, too. It really looks like it. Yeah, I've always really loved playing live. And um, I feel like in the last year, I mean, I feel really lucky I got to tour Live Forever at all because, you know, I put it out right in the middle of the pandemic and I kind of just didn't think I'd get to play that, that those songs. So it was, it was really a blessing to get to play them all over the country um, and in Canada and, you know, meet all these people and play with people I've looked up to for my whole life, you know, for my musical life. And, um, you know, that, that run with Courtney was really special. It was cool to play in Vancouver, beautiful place. Do you have a favorite song off Farm to Table? I know it's a, it's an unfair question in a, in a lot of ways, but are you most proud of? Yeah. The song that probably I'm most proud of, it's, it's, uh, an understated track on the record, but it's the last track on the record, Hennessy. Um, and I feel like, you know, with writing music, I oftentimes will write a song a number of ways over the years. And Hennessy has just lived as seven different versions for the last like four or five years. I never knew how to finish that track. And so um, I'm just really proud of how I recorded it. You know, earlier versions were a lot more produced, a lot more like big and full, but I, I settled on this very live, very raw, take on the song which i felt really served the album and served the song well and I was, I was really proud of it it's it's not the most ornate production but it is probably the most like sentimental and i you know i love that one fantastic now this this records in my life is a show about you the artists and the records that have inspired you i thank thank you again bartiz for being on the show we appreciate your time um right away i'm going to ask you your favorite national record and your favorite TV on the radio record. Oh God. Okay. My favorite national record. <laughs> I think it's boxer. 
I have to say, I, I'm going to say Boxer, but I'm saying, I mean, it's so hard. I love them all for so many reasons, but Boxer came out my senior year of high school, and um, it's just special. I've, I've done so many road trips to that song. I've, like, broken, gotten broken up with <laughs> so many times with that song playing in my head. You know, it's like, and uh, I also just read their 33 and a third. Um, the little book came out about the, the creation of that record, and it's like incredible. It's so inspiring. So I would probably say that one. And I think it's also like for the national. I think that's the one that kind of turned the tide for them. You know, like their their lives definitely changed after that record. So I think that one's special to me. Um, I believe you're a, you're a big fan of TV on the radio. Am I correct? Am I incorrect? Or am I correct on that one? You're extremely correct. Okay, um, dude. Return to Cookie Mountain. <laughs> yeah, it's a great one. That's my favorite shit, dude. And it's like, you know, Wolf Like Me, that song. Yeah, I know. Changed my life. I remember seeing that. I remember watching Letterman and seeing them play that on TV for the first wow. time. Wow. And I was so inspired. I was literally like, Mom, I need a guitar. Like, because that was the first time I ever saw a black guy on TV that looked like me that was playing music <laughs> that I liked. You know, it wasn't like blues or Jimi Hendrix or something. It was like, you know, the future. You know, that's, that was inspiring for me. So, yeah. That's a wonderful story. You used to play in hardcore bands around the D.C. area. What What is your favorite East Coast hardcore band? Dog, easy. Um, I'll, I'll say now, because over time, this answer changed with Soul Glow. Soul Glow, I think they're the best. They're based in Philadelphia. Um, they just put a record out that is absolutely phenomenal. Everyone should check it out. Um, but I mean, what's the record called? Let me see. I almost, <laughs> it's funny cause I almost called it <laughs> the, uh, turnstile record, but it is called do, 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 diaspora problems. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Excellent album. Excellent yeah. album. Um, yeah. And the other, and the other band you mentioned, is there, was there a record from them? Yeah. Turnstile glow on. Oh, turnstile glow on. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, Turnstile. I remember ten years ago, like when I moved out here, I was going to Turnstile shows. They've they've blown up huge because they can't. You can't get a ticket for Turnstile these days. It's impossible. I'm so proud of them. They're like, they're DC guy. You know, they're all from the DC area. So everyone is just like so proud. So 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 proud of Turnstile. They did it. So Bartiz, you you have a chance to go up with uh, Elon Musk or Richard Branson, and you're allowed to take one record with you. What what soundtrack do you take to space? I'm going up with Richard Branson, probably. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would take the um, soundtrack to Space is the Place, um, the movie that um, Sun Ra is in. That's a good one. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard Branson. Gosh, both of those people are pretty interesting, guys. What's the last record you purchased? Mind if I check my band camp really quick? Of course. All right. It looks like the last record that I bought um, is that, oh, it's um, Finally New by They Hate Change. I just bought it yesterday. I'm so excited about them. There are two guys from Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, they're producers and rappers, but they make like this, like very Gulf Coast dance hip hop kind of thing. It's like very much dance music, kind of feels like Big Freedia or like, you know, some, or like Detroit House kind of vibes, but they're rapping on it and they're, they're so unique. They just signed from um, Jag Jaguar. And wow. Yeah, I'm like really excited for them because it's like, I remember when I saw them sign, I was like, oh, this must be like a new indie band. And then I started listening and I was like, yo, these guys are just like, like beat makers, they're beat producers, like, and they're super young. And normally you don't see people like that kind of slide into this world of like indie rock music and alternative music. So um, I'm like really rooting for them. I, I like their stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a great story. And Jag Jaguar too, that they found a band or they found guys out of that area is cool. Yeah, it's really special. Um, and they're black, you know, so I'm just like, yeah, this is rare. This is Yeah. Yeah. School of Rock question for you. I, I, I assume you've seen the Jack Black film. Oh yeah, the long way to the top if you want to watch that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what what record? You have one record to send the kids home with to, to inspire them culturally and of course musically. 
Which, which record do you? Um, For Emma Forever Ago by Bon Iver. Because it's pretty amazing how much you can do with very little. You don't need a lot to do a lot. And that album shows that at every turn. It's like these super small moments that make you feel a lot. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And you did a great cover on if it was it's, if it was for Sirius XMU or you covered um, Skinny uh, Skinny Love, is that? Yeah, I did Skinny Love. That was cool. Um, Justin Vernon's the greatest. Yeah. yeah, that was great. That was fantastic. Uh, What's a good record? We're, we're living obviously in really turbulent times. I mean, there's every day <laughs> there's stuff happening. What What's a good album? To to send a positive vibe out there to to you know. Just in a positive vibe? To get people out there to make a difference and, and to open people's minds. Uh, oh, hey, Salt. Um, there's a band called Salt from the UK. Um, last year, they put, or I guess it might have been 2020, they put out a record um, called, uh, is it Air? No, Air just came out. I think they put out two records, right, in the same year, pr pretty much? Yeah, well, they put out, yes, Black Is and Rise. Okay, right. I, I would highly recommend those two records because I just feel like it's, it's, it's really inspiring and it's very future-facing. And I feel like what they're doing with music is, is really hard. It's like high technical ability stuff, but they're doing it in a way that is very approachable and extremely inspiring and hopeful and I, I i think they're awesome and also there's a record by a woman i'm gonna butcher her last name hmm. charlotte a yeah a didgery a didgeree something like that but um they put out a record she put out a record called topical dancer this year might be my favorite record of the year but it's like extremely like current in like kind of talking about issues around gender and race and politics and money and capitalism and and she's just laying it all out there i think it was produced with this dude named boris Poupel, who lives in belgium and i think she's french and it's just an awesome combination of sounds and mission and a lot of clarity around the, the artistic statement so um, i would i would recommend those two artists and those two albums great thank you on to the fun part of the show a couple more questions weed water or wine to listen to your favorite record and to write weed for to listen to your favorite record and to write? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like, um, you know, I smoke weed. Yes. Coffee with an artist, alive or dead? And who would the artist be? Your choice. Uh, he can be alive. He or she could be alive or dead. Or they. Sorry. Honestly, Jimi Hendrix. Like, that's corny, but it's true. I have, like, a lot of questions for Jimi Hendrix. So many. I've always wanted to know what it's like to like something I think about a lot in my own life and something he went through was I remember I've read a lot of interviews where he's like, I wish more black people came to my shows. I make so much music for black people and I can't get them to the shows. And I think about that in my own life. My crowd is pretty diverse, but I make a lot of the music thinking of people like me. And so I, I, I envision in, in the future, I'll probably feel that way too at some points. And I'm curious how he thought through that and got over it and whatever, you know, it's interesting record of your generation of your high school years silent alarm block party um helicopter bluest light stuff was big for me um i loved block party still do they just put out a new record i right. think it's pretty good you know a lot of people you know people have mixed reviews but i'm like sounds like a block party record to me mm -hmm. i mean big drums big riffs in kale that's what that's what it is words of wisdom for your fans and our audience um words of wisdom i mean you're enough you know like you don't have to be what you see on tv like you can make things you want to make be who you want to be it's it's plenty you know um you know as a <laughs> they would what is that movie i think shrek he's like just be yourself <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey some of those movies send great messages for for kids right i mean this is as campy and corny as they are right they do some of them do send great messages yeah, they nail it. Like, yo, I was talking to my friend about like um, ants and how it's like a, a movie about organizing and like yeah. and like unionization. I was like, oh my god, you're so right. Yeah, yeah. that's Woody Allen who, who's the lead, I believe, in that one, right? <laughs> it's okay, whatever. 
yeah, you're right. You're right. Separate the art from from the from the insanity, and I know it's. Pro I'll probably get, you know, crucified for saying that, but. Uh, I mean, everyone's a ghoul. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, like, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks so much, and best of luck with everything. We, uh, I think you're coming out to Vancouver, right again with. Uh, Somebody, I I don't remember when, but I think I'm playing there in the fall. Yeah, yeah, um, but no, thank you, and and shout out to Northern Transmissions because because my first ever like decent interview was done on the the written website. Thank you for doing that. Thanks for remembering. It's very, you know, it's humbling that you remember Northern Transmissions as well, and I I really appreciate that. And we. Uh, yeah, we're big fans, and uh, we wish you all the success in the world and everything. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If there's anything else I can do for you, I'll just let me know. I'm always down. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Hi, I'm Mark Henning, the director and editor of Records in My Life. Guess you liked it because we're here at the end of the video, so hit like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. And if you're feeling supportive, consider clicking over to patreon.com forward slash RIMLTV, and you can help us out there. Cheers. See you next time.